Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Crowley from We Tech Care View, and today I'm going to show you how to build a power app with cascading drop downs to pull in data from a SharePoint document library, not a SharePoint list. Um, so looking at this page, as you can see, I've got a document library with a lot of different templates and each of these documents have got metadata applied. And what you can see here is I've made a power app which has cascading drop downs, so they'll automatically update depending on the previously selected drop down. And, and once you have your drop down selected properly and ready, you can click download. And that will then download that document associated with the criteria you've put into those drop downs. OK, so I'm going to show you how to create the power app associated with this document library. Um, first things first, you want to create your SharePoint document library and you want to apply the columns that you want to be having your cascading drop downs filtering on and associated with whatever documents you want to be downloading. You need to populate that first, of course. Um, so if you click Power Apps and see all apps. And we will create a new app. It could be a canvas app from blank. OK, so the first things first is we want to add our drop downs. For the sake of this demonstration, of course, you can uh, make your designs a lot better than mine. I'm just going to do this quick just so you can see it from a functionality point of view. Um, let's just change the font size for this. Times. And we want to insert a button for our download button. Just change the text on that. So if we can see, I'm just going to rename the drop downs to associate with the criteria that we've got. So we've got country, city and department. So this will be drop down country. OK, so the first things first is we want to assign a global variable. Um, we'll come back to this when we get to the download button, but just for now, if you can select app and on the on start, we want to have a global variable, which for now I've just called template name. But this is just set, open brackets, the name of your variable, comma, empty quotations that just sets the variable to just be blank text at the moment and then close brackets. So apply that on the on start. OK, so for this first drop down, this is going to obviously be pulling this first column here. So we want this to pull the country and um, we also want this to be distinct values. So as you can see, you'll have multiple values for each document, but we don't want to be pulling, as you can see here, that we don't want to have two Australias in the list, two New Zealands, two United Kingdom. So we want to pull a distinct value. So for the first lookup, we just pull distinct. Ah, sorry, one other thing I need to show is we need to attach a connector to the SharePoint list. 
Um, so if you go to your data sources on the left, you can scroll down the connectors, select SharePoint, click SharePoint again, and then you can enter the URL of, of where you've got your document library. Or it should show up in the recent site if you've recently been working on it. Okay, staff enrollment. So there's the document library for me. So I'm setting up a data source connection to that SharePoint document library. Okay, so to have the first drop down pull in, we want this to be selected onto items and we just want to do a on the staff enrollment because that's the data source connection and we just want to pull the country value into this drop down. So as you can see there, that's already populated with Australia. The next drop down, we want to obviously filter on what is on the first drop down. So this is where the difference becomes in from when it's a SharePoint list to a SharePoint document library. Uh, there's a lot of ways you can do this. I found the way that works best with this is doing a distinct filter. So you can see here we'll have a distinct filter. We're looking at the data source staff enrollment where the country value is equal to drop down country. So that is looking at this first drop down value. And then we just want to, after that, we just want to pull back the city value. So distinct lookup filter, whatever is related to the country in the selected drop down for drop down country, retain any city values for that. So I'll just copy that in. And as you can see, that's already pulled that data in to Melbourne. Okay, so for our third and final drop down, this again, we just want to look on a distinct filter on what's applied to the previous two drop downs. Um, so this is just a bit of a longer, so we've got our distinct filter, uh, the data source of staff enrollment again, where the country value equals what is in the first drop down country selected result. And then you want to put these two ampersands here. So this is what makes it look for both. So it's what the country value is the selected result in the first drop down, and the city value is what in this drop down city value. So it'll look for both of them, and then it will retain the department value. Okay, and we can see that's pulling incorrectly. So now for our download button, what we want to do is when you go to click this download button, we obviously want to download the document associated with what we have selected in those cascading drop downs. So this is where it comes back to the variable we, we created at the start. So for the drop down button, we have got two separate commands here. Uh, for the first command, it sets the template name, so that sets that variable. And then we want to do a lookup. So a lookup is different to filter because a lookup just pulls the first value, whereas a filter will pull all the values. So we want to set the variable template name, and we want to do a lookup where this will then look at the values in all three of those drop downs. So this lookup from the staff enrollment data source, we'll look at the country value is equal to the country dropdown, the city value and, so it's got the double ampersand, so and the city value is equal to the dropdown city value and the department value is equal to the department selected value. Um, and then that will pull back the name. So that will then pull back the name of that document, which is in the name field here. So again, what this, what this, um, and is doing is it's setting the variable template name to whatever name is retained. If you had multiple documents with all of the same metadata, so the same values, it would just always pull the first one back um, and that will pull that name back. So that's 
so that first command will set the template name and then you want to put your semicolon here because then that will show that it's the end of that command and then it will run the next command which is a launch so this launch navigates the user to a new url and that url is a download url so that will download the document that we've just put our criteria to download so in this launch you want to have the you your you want to have your domain URL to the site where your document library is, and then you need to add underscore layouts forward slash download dot aspx with a question mark. Then you need to add source URL, and then again the same URL but including the document library, and then here is where we just add the variable to that URL. So, so you would open your inverted commas. Sorry, so your inverted commas start here. So once you've got to your document library, you would have your forward slash, you would end the inverted commas, add an ampersand, and then the name of that variable. Then add another ampersand, and then open your inverted commas again, and add dot doc x. So that is, so within that URL, it needs to have the format of that file. So the variable will always populate with just so as you can see, I'm hovering here, it'll be Oz Enrollment Template 2. That will just be put into this, this URL here, added the doc X at the bottom, and then that will download that specific document to what we have just captured. So that here. Okay, so when we go to paste this in our button, just make sure that you change this from text because you don't want to paste this in the text. We want to change this to the on select. So it fires those values on the button on select. So at the moment, that's just set to false. Paste all of that in. And that works like that. That's fine. So this should be ready to go. So let me test the app. So I want to get a template from United Kingdom, from Liverpool. From sales, if I click download, that will navigate to the new URL. And as you can see, it's downloaded the UK enrollment template. So I'll just look quick back. So if you can see United Kingdom, Liverpool sales, it's downloaded the UK enrollment template three. I hope that has been viable for you and um, drop any feedback in the comments. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care.